uh, the in which you know, and this gets into the brilliance uh, of Imam Jafar Sadiq salam. You know, if you look at the way he he taught, uh, it's just you know you just have to admire his brilliance. If you don't know, Imam Jafar Sadiq salam is the son of Imam Muhammad Baqir, who was the son of Imam Zain al Abidin, who was the son of Imam Hussein al salam. Uh, he is, and Imam Jafar Sadiq is among the teachers of Imam Malik as well as uh, the teachers of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi And to the extent that Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi said about him that if he had not had those two years that he had with him, then he would never have understood anything. Uh, and so, uh, the uh, when he taught in Medina Munawwara, you know, along with all of the religious sciences, he also taught physics, mathematics, astronomy, chemistry, to the extent that the father of modern-day chemistry, Jabir ibn Hayyan, is one of his students. Uh, and it's very interesting because Jabir uh, ibn Hayyan, whenever he would say anything, when he would talk about the science of chemistry, you know, when he talked about evaporation and all the laws of osmosis and all of these other things, you know, he would always say that my teacher, Jafar Sadiq, taught me this. You know. And, you know, an interesting side note here is the term gibberish comes from Jabir. Uh, because the uh, Westerners used to refer uh, refer to him as uh, Gerber. And so where's where you get gibberish from because when they started reading his writings, they couldn't make head or tails of it. So, you know, heads or tails of it. And they said, oh, you know, this is just gibberish. You know, we can't understand this. Until later generation came and they realized, oh, wow, you know, this is something, you know, truly remarkable. But he, everything he learned, he learned from his teacher, Imam Jafar Sadiq. So Imam Jafar Sadiq taught the sciences, the, 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 the worldly sciences, along with the religious sciences, so that the religious scholars understood the basis of, of what the fatwas that they, or the rulings they are giving, you know, in, in that affect people in the real world. And so they couldn't, it wasn't just simply some non-Muslim coming and feeding them, you know, a bunch of misinformation and suddenly saying, oh, this is the fatwa. Uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, this fatwa that, oh, gelatin is halal, uh, you know, even pork gelatin is halal because its nature has been changed. Well, if you look at the science behind it, gelatin, you haven't changed the nature of it. You know, you can scientifically tell the difference between pork gelatin and beef gelatin and any other gelatin or plant gelatin. Uh, you know, because all you do to make gelatin is you take the bones and the skin and you boil it and that white or that clear layer that forms on top, you know, that's gelatin. You powder it and you, you know, you, you sell it. So, you know, so people are giving these rulings based on information from a scientific standpoint that is inaccurate. You know, so, uh, you know, again, social distancing salat is not salat uh, so uh, you know but uh, as far as uh, salat al eid it can be made in the home you need four male adults uh, you have to have you know the salat as it should be and the khutbah simple khutbah uh, is enough and that's it and you can't you know again if you're making it in your house and neighbor finds out and he says oh I want to come too you can't say oh no no you can't come you know however if somebody is sick and they truly are sick and somebody's sick uh, then they shouldn't come and those people yeah you can say okay yeah you're sick don't come you know that's a different that becomes a totally different issue the obligation of the salat is not on the women uh, you know the salat al eid is not fard uh, it is wajib in Hanafi you know, some of the other, other many of most of the other scholars say sunnah mawkida but but in Hanafi it is wajib uh, so to forego it is a sin. Uh, you know, to deny it is not kufr, but to forego it is a sin. Uh, so we need to keep all of this in mind, inshallah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us through these times uh, and uh, allow us to uh, uh, do things that please him and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, and get us through all of this, inshallah. 
and, and may he make things easy uh, for us and raise us up where he is pleased with us, inshallah. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.